This channel is what studying abroad dreams are made of. Do subscribe and hit the bell icon. Hey guys, welcome back to our channel Life School Connect. Like every week we are back with some really interesting content all around overseas education. And this week we're going to talk about something that pretty much all students ask to themselves and that is which university should I study in? Now this is a question that you will ask yourself pretty much in the earlier stages of you know choosing the right college and course. Uh, now the first thing that you need to understand is there are a variety of parameters that should impact your decision right so today we will be talking about all these parameters that will influence your decision making right and the second thing that you should know about is that your choice of universities that you apply to should not just be dream universities it should be a mix of universities so there should be some which are dream universities where it might be slightly difficult to crack into uh, but still it's an ambitious challenge and maybe if you work hard enough you might just get into one of those dream universities another category is the reach universities now reach universities are you know it's like a mid ground like there's a 50 50 chance a 60 40 chance of you making it to these good uh, but yet achievable universities uh, and then there are safe universities where there is a great chance of you cracking through them almost like a backup so uh, let's say that there is at least a 70 to 80 percent chance of you making to a safe university now while you do consider applying to universities we would recommend you to apply to at least one to two universities in each of these sections right so in each of these buckets uh, one to two each so you apply to at least five to eight colleges on the minimum uh, when you're looking at applying to universities all right so now you know that you're supposed to have shortlisted uh, universities you know uh, there should be dream universities reach university bucket and there should be a safe university bucket but what are the factors that influence choosing these universities so the first factor we're going to talk about is the availability of the program now some courses are available in most colleges so maybe a basic uh, management course uh, a basic course in science or technology uh, a few things maybe even arts and law are available in all colleges but what you need to understand is is your specialization available in the college this is especially important for students who are looking at pursuing a master's right because uh, you're looking at probably a very specific a very niche uh, subject say uh, a management uh, coupled with data science for example so you really want to check if the university can provide you that course point number two the location and community now for a student it is extremely important that the university is in proximity with two things the first one is a safe accommodation i know it sounds like a very trivial thing but when you when you reach the destination and you know when you realize that you're in a safe environment and you are in a place that's extremely close to university and it's lively and there are a lot of students in this accommodation that you've chosen you'll be really happy with your choice you know compared to a situation where you're very unsure or you feel unsafe about being where you are right so always be sure about accommodation another important aspect about location and community is the fact that you need to be in proximity with good companies now when you're in proximity uh, physical proximity with good companies what happens is it's very easy to to find a summer internship to work with people who are close to your university right networking becomes easy you will 
meet more people you will be able to attend more events by these companies and that's how eventually uh, it will be a lot nicer to be there around near you know good universities and of course juxtaposed with good companies the third point is curriculum now this is pretty much the essence of why you're going to study abroad right you really need to understand if you have chosen a university does it have the course that you're looking for or not and once you know that they have the course that you're looking for what do you do next you go ahead check out on their website uh, just like you checked whether the course is available or not go into the details of the course try to understand is it aligned to your career objectives for example if you want to go ahead and pursue uh, an operations role in a data science company you'll probably want to do a management uh, with a major in operations and a specialization with a special core in data science right something on those lines so you need to understand are those subjects uh, detailed in that fashion or not so where do you find these details one you could either head to the university website and check out the course details or you could even head to iSchool Connect and you can look at all these courses and the different aspects about the coursework. The fourth point is requirements and criteria. Now, for any university, as much as it's important for you to tick off all the important points, it is going to be important for you to check whether the university is going to accept your profile or not. And how do you do that? It's important that you check uh, whether all your scores are aligned with their requirements. So for example, your uh, 12th grades, uh, your 10th standard grades, your, uh, if, you're, if you're going for a graduate, then your bachelor's uh, scores, your GPA, are they all matching the cutoff? Some universities require or even you know, don't require a GRE or GMAT. Some even don't even ask for an IELTS or a TOEFL. So check in with those requirements. If they are needed, then what is the cutoff? And then, you know, you will have a much better idea that, okay, I match the cutoff. So there is a fair chance of me cracking into this university. And the last and the most important point is tuitions and financial aids. Now, for any student who is looking at studying abroad, especially international students, we know that one of the biggest hurdles that you will be you know, facing is finances. And that's why you must keep in mind uh, the different kind of you know, options available for you. So first and foremost are scholarships. Most universities that you apply to will have scholarships for students. Right now, these will be need based scholarships or these could be merit based scholarships. We just did a very interesting video uh, full of information on scholarships. We'll make sure we tag it uh, somewhere here or in the description. So you go through that uh, for sure. Um, so, yeah, universities are going to have a variety of scholarships available. That's for sure. Apart from that, there are a lot of organizations that offer uh, scholarships, right? Uh, so there is the Dhirubhai scholarship, there is the Inclax Shiv the Science scholarship, there's the Tata scholarship, uh, and there's a whole list, and we'll mention that on the screen right now. Uh, so you really need to understand where you can fit in and if you can pitch in your profile for any of these scholarships. And apart from that, there are a lot of banking and non-banking organizations that provide education loans. So you can definitely check those out as well. All right, guys, I think we covered pretty much everything important uh, around this topic. But if there's anything else that you would like to know, you can always reach out to us via the comment section below or you could DM us on social media. Our handles everywhere are iSchool Connect. If you like this video, please do like and share and of course subscribe to the channel. We would love to share all these new updates that we have all around overseas education and all the suggestions we have for all of you. Until next time, this is Malrika signing off. Please take care. Bye-bye.